Now that we know what a basis of a vector space is, a linearly independent set of vectors that spans the space, we're prepared to define the dimension of a vector space and look at some familiar examples of dimension. Before we see the definition of dimension, there are a couple quick facts we need to be aware of. If V is a finite dimensional vector space with this set of n vectors as a basis, then firstly, if a set in V has more than n vectors, that set must be linearly dependent. So if a basis for a vector space has n vectors, then any set with more than n vectors can't possibly be linearly independent. If there were n linearly independent vectors in the space, there's no way that the n vectors in the basis could span it. Secondly, if a set in V has fewer than n vectors, that set does not span the space. Certainly, if a basis for the space has n vectors, there's no way that a set with fewer than n vectors could span that space. These facts are not trivial, but they probably feel pretty reasonable. I'll leave a link in the description to a lesson proving that these facts are true, but they imply a very important result, and that is that all bases for a finite dimensional vector space must have the same number of vectors. So no, a basis is not unique, but the number of vectors in it is. Every basis will have that same number of vectors. Because if we had a set with more vectors, that set would have to be linearly dependent, hence not a basis. If the set had fewer vectors, then it couldn't possibly span the space, hence, once again, not a basis. Since every basis for a vector space has the same number of vectors, that number of vectors is a perfect candidate for the definition of dimension. And so here is our definition. The dimension of a finite dimensional vector space V is denoted by dim of V and is defined to be the number of vectors in a basis for V. No matter what basis we have, its number of vectors will be the same, and so that's the dimension of the space. In addition, the zero vector space is defined to have dimension zero, which is consistent with the fact that we consider the basis for the zero vector space to be the empty set. The basis has zero vectors, so the dimension is zero. Let's take a gander at some examples. The dimension of the vector space Rn, unsurprisingly, is n. For example, the dimension of the vector space R squared is 2, because there are two vectors in the standard basis, for example, the vector 1, 0, and the vector 0, 1. There are two vectors in the standard basis, and so the dimension is 2. Any basis of this space would have two vectors. The dimension of R cubed, of course, is 3, because its standard basis has these three vectors. The dimension of Pn, the vector space of polynomials with degree at most n, is n plus 1, because the standard basis of the vector space Pn contains x to the 1, x to the 2, and so on, all the way through x to the n. That's n vectors, and then we also have 1 in the standard basis. So in total, it's n plus 1 vectors, so that's the dimension of Pn. The dimension of the vector space of m by n matrices is m times n, because there are m times n entries in an m by n matrix, and we need a matrix for every one of those entries, where the entry is 1 and the others are 0. For example, the standard basis vectors for the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices has this vector, which is of course a matrix with a 1 in the top left. It has this vector, where the matrix has a 1 in the top right. It has this vector, where the matrix has a 1 in the lower left. And it has this vector, where the matrix has a 1 in the lower right. The dimension of this vector space is 2 times 2. That's 4, because there are 4 entries, which all need a turn at being 1. They all need their own matrix, where they're 1, and everything else is 0. One more general example, if we have a set of n linearly independent vectors, then certainly it's a basis for its span 
And so the dimension of its span is n, the number of vectors in that linearly independent set. Let's finish with a more involved example where we find the dimension of the solution space of this homogeneous linear system. We have three equations and we have five unknowns. This gives us this coefficient matrix, and we're leaving out the constants because they're all zero. Now let's solve this system using Gauss-Jordan elimination. Performing Gauss-Jordan elimination, you can verify that we arrive at this reduced row echelon form matrix. Columns 1, 2, and 4 have leading ones, so x1, x2, and x4 are our leading variables that we'll solve for in terms of the free variables. Since we see column 3 and column 5 do not have leading ones, the corresponding variables x3 and x5 are our free variables, so we'll assign them each to an arbitrary parameter. Let's say x5 equals t and x3 equals s. Then, from row 1, we have that x1 is equal to s plus 4t. From row 2, we have that x2 is equal to negative 9t. From row 3, we have that x4 is equal to 2t. Remember, each of these rows corresponds to an expression which is equal to zero. So we solve for the leading variable by just adding things to the right side. So any vector in R5 that is a solution to this system must be a vector of this form. So it would look like this. The first component is s plus 4t, the second component is negative 9t, and so on. Since there are two free variables, hence two parameters, we can break this single solution vector up into a linear combination of vectors, this one representing the coefficients of s, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and this other vector with the coefficients of t, 4, negative 9, 0, 2, and 1. So these two vectors together span the solution space. By combining multiples of these two vectors, we get the entire solution space to this system. So it's these two vectors, which we could call v1 and v2, that span the solution space. However, are the vectors linearly independent? The answer is yes. It's pretty easy to see that these vectors are not scalar multiples of each other, so they are linearly independent, and hence these two vectors, together, form a basis for the solution space. Hence, the dimension of the solution space is 2. Again, in this case, it's pretty easy to see these vectors are not scalar multiples of each other, and so they are linearly independent. But in general, solving a system like this with Gauss-Jordan elimination will always produce linearly independent vectors. So yeah, we're going to end up with a basis. And again, since there are two vectors in the basis, the dimension of the solution space is 2. So with Gauss-Jordan elimination, we found two vectors that produce a basis for the solution space. Seen there, there's two vectors. The span of those two vectors is the solution space and the dimension is 2. So that's what the dimension of a vector space is, as well as a handful of examples. Again, it's just the number of vectors in a basis for the space. The number of vectors in any basis for a given space has to be the same. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find these videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos, as well as access to the lecture notes at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Mama. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're